Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new episode of Luxury Will I Buy It? But here on my channel, we like to add a little French twist. So for collections we do want, we say oui, and for collections we don't want, we say no merci. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. Thank you for meeting me this morning to get our steps in, our daily walk at the mall. Let's do a couple laps around, do some browsing, some window shopping, see what's brand new and coming out on the horizon soon because it is nice to budget for things and see what's worth splurging on, what's worth saving our pennies. So first order of business is actually something quite sad. So I received this email from Nordstrom Canada last week and it reads as the following to our Nordstrom Canada customers. While we've enjoyed serving you since 2014 and we have built a fantastic team in Canada, we are writing to share that we've made the tough decision to wind down our operations in Canada, close our 13 Nordstrom and Nordstrom Rack stores, and Sunset Nordstrom.ca. So effectively, Nordstrom Canada is closing its doors. And this is incredibly sad for all of their employees. Like there are thousands of people, I'm guessing thousands, who work for Nordstrom Canada in store, you know, working retail at the physical locations and the teams working on the website as well. You know, it takes a lot of people to run a website. So I don't know what happened exactly. It's it's really sad. It's really tragic. Um, I feel for all the hardworking employees who had nothing to do with this decision or the decisions leading to this happening. I don't know. I don't even pretend to understand what happened. I know that several years ago target attempted to open in canada and it failed miserably in the case of target they completely neglected the fact that canada is in fact a different country and they messed it up completely from the beginning they were basically destined to fail because they just didn't it did not occur to them that canada was a separate country but here for nordstrom they've been here for a lot longer than target target i think lasted maybe two years maybe 18 months but target it's been almost a decade 2014 that's close to a decade and you know i know a lot of people who shop nordstrom nordstrom rack i'm talking about here in canada so i don't know what happened it's quite tragic, it's quite sad, and so I wish the best of luck to all the hardworking employees. I hope they can find something else. I hope they can bounce back and find something. And I just wanted to share that with you in case you missed the email or if you missed the news about Nordstrom Canada. So hopefully it's still doing well in the US. I know Barney's closed a few years ago in the US, which I was quite surprised by because I always loved Barney's, but anyway. That is that for beauty news. Let's move on to something a little bit more inspiring and less depressing. We have a new makeup here from Victoria Beckham Beauty, Posh Spice, my favorite girl spice. <laughs> my favorite girl spice, my favorite spice girl, my goodness. Um, we have these eyeshadow sticks here. These are the Eyewear Longwear Crease Proof Eyeshadow Stick. Hmm. I wonder if they're waterproof as well. Oftentimes these are also waterproof. For, yeah, it says waterproof, eight hours of wear. Interesting. So eight fashion shades, two statement finishes. So we have satin and matte. Makes sense. Glides on easily, tug-free application, buildable color. Interesting. It's supposed to set, be crease-proof, waterproof, fade-proof all that good stuff and these are 34 canadian yes i'm on the canadian site or us let me check no i'm on the us site so these are 34 usd plus tax and there are seven shades to choose from so it's split almost 50 50 between the matte and the satin the shade selection is interesting asterisk uh, i don't know why they went with that pink and yellow like I don't know if it's because it's spring and they want Easter colors, but the first two colors to me look weird. 
Like if you just ignore the first two, the bottom five, great, like neutral. There is that darker greeny, like the bottle green color, but everything else looks very everyday. The first two, I don't know what those are. And the first two, the pink and the yellow, are both matte. And we definitely see lots of like champagne pinks for the eye, like for an eyeshadow stick, we see that across the board. But this is just weird. It looks like a baby pink, like a pastel bubble bubblegum pink in matte. Weird. Anyway, the last five, I think, are much more suitable. I like the caramel, the, the oyster color. I think it looks really pretty, just like a beautiful, silvery, cool, light color. I think the bottom five colors look great, wonderful. I have not tried them. I don't know how wonderful they are. I have tried a lot of other Victoria Beckham Beauty, like the eyeshadow palettes I like, the lipstick. Did I try the gloss? No, not yet. I've tried the blushes. They've been nice. So everything that I've tried so far, I've enjoyed. So, but I can't really say 100%. Um, I think this is a wee for me. However, I'm not rushing immediately to get it. This is permanent. Let's enjoy ourselves. I'm going to let this percolate in my mind. And, you know, sometimes I just enjoy shopping permanent collection items instead of just new, 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 buy, buy, buy right now. So I think maybe the caramel shade looks really nice. Just like, you know, like an easy peasy swipe it on mascara out the door. That one looks really nice. So it's a wee for me, just not right now. Speaking of eyeshadow stick news, it must be something in the water because Hourglass has come out with their version of a new eyeshadow stick. This is the Voyeur eyeshadow stick and this is 49 Canadian. So these are more expensive, definitely. Well, I don't know what the conversion rate is. You can figure it out. Uh, but these ones here, uh, again, we have seven shades, but these ones here, they're all, they look satiny. I don't think there's any matte here. They all, I mean, it's a promo photo, so it's hard to tell, but they all look like they have a satiny finish. Some have metallic written in, so we could only assume that the metallic one is going to be more intense. But these, when I think of a shadow stick, I think very neutral. I think like one and done, sometimes copper or gold or like rose gold, but more neutral. So this to me, is a bit more my wheelhouse of colors, color recommendations. They do have some more fun colors like the olive green, the metallic plum, but everything else is like a taupe or a copper or a champagne. You know, I don't know if you agree with me. Let me know in the comments. Like for you, a shadow stick, is it sort of in like the gold copper neutral family or do you think any color will do? I would love to hear from you because I don't know how we form these opinions, but sometimes they're just stuck there. So. Again, this is a wee for me. It's just not an immediate rush. I'm going to go see if I can swatch these at Sephora, even though Sephora is a zoo. I always forget what a zoo it is until I go in and I'm like, oof. But I'll see if I can swatch them in person. That's one thing about Victoria Beckham that I can't really do. I just have to buy online and fingers crossed it's nice when it arrives. So this one here, the Hourglass, is a creamy texture, eight hour crease resistant wear, comfortable feel supposed to glide, no tugging, no skipping. Yeah, I, I, I think it's like a, a wee for execution, a wee for just, you know, the colors look nice. Hourglass, I haven't tried a lot. I've tried their blushes. Their blushes are gorgeous, 100%, 10 out of 10, would recommend. I haven't tried a lot of their other makeup, so I don't know how this is going to be. Hopefully it's going to be good because I know it's a, a brand that a lot of people enjoy. So it's a wee, it's just not this like immediate like, oof, need to spend right now. Now let's move over to Trend Mood 1 because we have some sneak peeks here of Guerlain. Yes, Guerlain. So this is the Terracotta Luminizer. Now when I think of Terracotta, I think of their bronzers. So let me know in the comments, do they usually do a terracotta highlighter? Let me know, because I'm sort of new-ish to Guerlain. I'm getting into it a bit more. Now, this looks really pretty. So I think these are available in Europe right now. We have a cool ivory. Sorry, someone's car alarm honked and I was just startled for a second. Um, cool ivory and warm gold. Interesting. I think 
both look pretty. Let me know if you can hear the car honking. I would love to know if that's just me or if you can hear it too. I'm a little surprised that there's only two colors because when I think of Guerlain, they typically have a nice shade range and like a shade selection with their foundations and their bronzers too. They tend to have deeper colors. So maybe these are a little bit more universal and we have like the arm swatches, but like promo photos are really wild compared to what they look like in person. So for me, these highlighters are probably going to be a non merci because I am saving my money and I'm waiting for a new Guerlain terracotta bronzer. I want to get a new bronzer because I feel like it for like May, probably April, May, June, you know, whenever they come out with like summer releases, I want to get a new one from Guerlain, whatever it is. Hopefully they actually come out with a bronzer, not just a highlighter, but yeah, I want to save my money for that. So I'm, it's probably going to be a non merci for me on the highlighters personally, but I will wait for a bronzer. I haven't seen any sneak peeks of the bronzers yet. As soon as I do, I will let you know. I will share my information with you. So it's a non merci, but they do look pretty. Like they look gorgeous. They look like a rays of sun, like a burst of sun. It looks very pretty and I'm sure that the formula is gorgeous and lovely. Maybe I will do a little swatch, you know, see in person, but I'm gonna save my money. So no merci, no merci. All right, moving on to Dior. We have some new limited edition lipstick and cases. So I love Dior, as you can tell. I love their lipsticks. I love their <laughs> limited edition cases. This is, I think this was from the Mille Fiori or the Miss Dior collection. I think this is Mille Fiori. And then the lipstick here is 1947 Miss Dior. So I like the glossy lip addict shine lipsticks. I love their cases, especially these gorgeous, very extra ones. But these ones here, I don't know. They're not quite doing it for me. So we have these cases here. Maybe it's just like all the red that I'm just like, ugh, a bit saturated of red at the moment, especially for spring. I'm like, mm, come on guys, I want something else. I think that these four cases look nice. Like I don't think that they look terrible, but sometimes, I don't know, it's like inexplicable what makes you want to spend your money and what doesn't, but this to me, meh, it's a non merci. I just, it's cute, but I'll, I'll save my money for something else. And then here we have the lipsticks here. So I guess these new Addict Shines are all limited edition. Hmm. I know that this has uh, the inverse effect on me. When everything is limited edition, it makes me uninterested. For some reason, I'm like, I associate limited edition with like this rush, this like ugh, feral shopping experience. And I'm like, no merci, I don't think so. So I like that there's not just red. We clearly have lots of red lipsticks here, but we have some more pinky nudes, which is nice. But uh, the arm swatches do look nice. Like they all look really pretty, like light pinky nudes, very, very lovely. Like there's nothing here that looks bad. It's just not for me. I do like that there's some, uh, slightly more raspberry reds, but we also do have those like, deep warm reds which apparently we cannot escape anywhere i think that these look nice but it's just not for me so no no merci which is perfectly fine because this is dior this is peter phillips he's gonna come out with a thousand more <laughs> releases this year not a thousand but a lot more and there's going to be new cases new lipsticks new products in general so this one is going to be a, a non merci for me. I'm just over the red and the warm bricky reds. Like I like red, but I like other colors. I like blue. I like anything else. So it's a non merci for me. Let me know in the comments if it's for you and if you picked this up and which cases and which lipsticks. It is fun to mix and match the lipstick to the case. I, I will admit that's true. Moving on to something here from Too Faced Cosmetics. Now, some people might say that Too Faced is more high-end than luxury and I would agree, but sometimes a product just works and so let's not nitpick here. So the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is this is the Born This Way Healthy Glow SPF Moisturizing Skin Tint. Now several years ago, maybe close to a decade ago, I had a 
sort of moisturizing skin tint from Too Faced Cosmetics. I forget the name of it, but it was amazing. It was sheer, it was luminous, it was like a filter for my face. It was beautiful. It made my skin look like skin, act like skin, feel like skin, and it was just, it was gorgeous. And then they discontinued it, rude. So my hope is that perhaps this is that formula, but reformulated. This is described as an oil-free nourishing serum foundation with up to 24 hours of wear and hydration with an SPF of 30 for healthy skin, glowing skin, soft focus skin, medium coverage, interesting, a natural finish. I think the original one that I tried, I don't remember if it was a medium coverage, but it was very light. It was just great. It was a wonderful product. Um, so this here at first, the bottle, I thought it looked like the Dior Backstage uh, product, like the face and body foundation. Interesting. Now the shade range here looks a bit weird. There aren't that many colors to choose from. I think I wore the shade Nude or Vanilla. I don't remember exactly. I threw it out a long time ago because there was nothing left in the tube. I like, you know, when you cut it open and then you scoop it out, that's how good it was. So from what I remember though, it was pretty sheer. Like it wasn't a per, like you didn't need a perfect shade match. You could just sort of blend it with your fingers and it was really light. So the fact that the shade range isn't huge I don't know if I'm talking correctly here because I'm, I'm, re I'm referencing the old product, which was sheer and you could stretch it out. And so you didn't need a perfect shade match because of how sheer it was. If this is more medium coverage, I don't know if it's going to be as sheer. I hope it is. Otherwise the shade range is kind of mm, questionable, but I'm interested in seeing this. The finish is a soft focus ethereal glow and it's supposed to be medium and buildable. I hope it's light, I hope it's very sheer, and I hope it's a, a similar product that I tried many years ago. Okay, I found out what it was called. It was the Too Faced Tinted Beauty Balm, multi-benefit. It really was a beauty balm. It doesn't even have the word foundation in it or anything. It was just this beautiful, healthy, glow, Instagram filter, light diffusing, pigments. It was beautiful. So fingers crossed that this new product here will be a dupe or, you know, a very close first cousin of this beauty bomb because it was so wonderful. So I'm going to wait. I'm not going to buy it right away. I'll wait for it to be in person at Sephora and get a little sample and uh, test it out. So that's probably a week for me. I think so, especially if it comes out in summer, you know, like light, sheer complexion. Love that. Now moving on to NARS, we have the Laguna collection for NARS Cosmetics and inspired by their best-selling bronzer Laguna. I have Laguna 2 in a cream bronzer format. It's gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful bronzer. Now, I love that they came out with two little quads. Thank you, Nars. Thank you for listening. I love a tiny little quad. I just think it's easy. And Nars eyeshadows are really nice quality. So we have two here. We have Laguna Sunset and Laguna. Laguna Sunset looks really nice. It's all satin here. There's no matte. So we have like the warm goldy bronze, light color, and then a red cranberry, of course. We cannot escape anywhere. But then the Laguna bronzer, this one here, this is the one that's calling my name, calling my attention. I just love how neutral it is. It doesn't have any bells and whistles. It doesn't look extraordinary in the palette, but sometimes those palettes are the ones that make you look the best. When they don't look that interesting in the palette, on the eyes, always so flattering, so chic, so elegant. So for me, Laguna is the one that's tempting me the most. And this one here does have a matte, a dark matte, and then the rest are all beautiful satin shimmery colors. If I get one, I'm getting the bronzy Laguna palette. I think it looks gorgeous. It just looks nude. Like even the models, their manicures look nude. The eyeshadows look nude. Like this looks really, really nice. In this Laguna release, there's also a tinted afterglow lip balm. So yeah, it's going to be like a sheer bronzy with a gold shimmer lip balm. Who doesn't like um, a very extra tinted lip balm? So this is a wee for me, not everything, but I think execution wise, I think the shade selection is really nice. I think 
I love the fact that they have two small palettes. I love that instead of like their big palettes. They do often make big palettes and I have tried them. They're actually nice, but my preference is always something smaller. So I'm glad to see that. So this is a wee for me. I'm going to wait, but it's going to be a wee. Now, next up is something from It Cosmetics. This is the Bye Bye Dark Spot Concealer Serum. So it provides an instant medium coverage for 24 hours of hydration, visibly improves the look over time of bare skin. So it's supposed to have a lightweight, creamy texture, buildable, medium coverage. It's supposed to be a brightener or a concealer. Interesting. I haven't tried that much It Cosmetics. I have tried their bye bye under eye concealer the one that's like kind of a thicker paste i have tried that i did like it um it's not a brand that i've tried a lot of i don't really know if i feel like testing this out to be honest i think this is more of a dark spot concealer than a brightener and i do have darkness that i correct with my skincare and makeup but I'm more into brightening concealers than dark spot correcting. I don't know if this is really for me. You know, not everything is for everyone. And it comes with uh, that little, not a spoolie, but like a little sponge or brush on the opposite end. Those are nice, but they always get really dirty. I don't know. I mean, the models look great. They always do. I don't know if these have been like retouched. It says it's real results. It looks like it's correcting a ton. I mean. It looks really like it's covering a lot of blemishes and imperfections, so that is great. I just, I don't know if this is actually a product for my needs. So I think for me, it's probably a non merci, just because it's just not what I need and that's perfectly fine. But if you are in the need for a dark spot corrector, this might be for you. So for me, it's a non merci. And last but not least, let's round off this video with some Tom Ford. We have two new Tom Ford eyeshadow palettes. Now, I love Tom Ford. I love Tom Ford eyeshadows. I have quite a few. They are all really lovely. We have this one here called Cherry Smoke, which is a mid-tone copper red, burnt and deep reds and maroon. That's a non merci for me. As much as I love Tom Ford, I am just over the deep burnt reds and maroons. It's not for me. If it's for you, I'm so happy for you. I will not be selling this out. I know Tom Ford does a lot of like cherry products, like cherry eyeshadow palettes, cherry perfumes. It must be something within the brand that they revisit a lot because it just seems to be quite popular. Um, like I stated, I love Tom Ford eyeshadows, the traditional formula and the cream formula. They're great, super easy to use, wonderful products, but cherry smoke is no merci for me. And then we have electric cherry, which is shimmering pinks, cool purple, and dirty red. If I had to choose, I would go with electric cherry because it's it seems a bit lighter. We have the pink, purple. I love a cool purple, but we do have a dirty red, of course. We cannot, cannot escape that dirty brownish red. If I had to choose one, I would pick electric cherry. That being said, I think it's a no merci for me personally, but I know some of you are messaging me about these two palettes and these are available now at Beautylish and Holt Renfrew as well. Thank you for letting me know that. And a couple other retailers too. But these two palettes, they're just not for me. And I'm quite happy with the Chanel Le Blanc palette I just picked up a few weeks ago. So I'm quite happy with that. Th these tones are not for me. Maybe if I could see them in person because the promo photos always look so wild. But maybe if I saw them in person and swatched them, I probably wouldn't buy it. But I, you know, I would swatch them anyway. That's always free to swatch eyeshadow. It's a non merci for me for Tom Ford. Non merci. Anyway, I think that about wraps up our lap around the mall. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me for coffee and for browsing these new collections. Sound off down below. Let me know what you are going to spend your hard-earned money on and what are you skipping. As always, make sure you are subscribed because I like to do this type of content every week or so just to let you know what's coming up, what's brand new. It's always nice to know what we should be saving or spending our money on. So make sure you're subscribed. And 
on that note, that's all I have for you guys for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.